I got the guy, bro. Did you? <laughs> my boy John. I want some. I don't even run. Dude, my boy John uh, designs all of them. Oh, that guy. Yeah. He, that, that, did you meet him through him? Yeah. Uh, he's a member of Barbara Gate. Really? Yeah. Okay. I saw that. Yeah. All right. We're we're in. This They're is like so se- comfy. Se- secret download shit you're not supposed to know, but here it is anyway. Okay. Let's hear it. No, no, no. Oh, no, my, no. Yeah, my yeah, secrets. St- no, yeah, they can yeah. know about my boy John. Okay. Shout out, John. Um, yeah, no, actually, the thing I want to talk about, we're, we're here to talk about fucking tennis today, but, um, the, I'm gonna have to bleep that because like the first 13 seconds of the show and I just swore. Oh, oh my God. Is it YouTube? Ah, all right. Anyway. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. The, yeah. You guys uh, got to give me a heads up on that because I, uh, cuss, so cuss you like can swear, you can swear as much as you want. You just don't do it in the first like 13 yeah. seconds or whatever. It oh, is. Beep it. that's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So I'll just be bleeping that out. Just starting over here. Um, have you been following, do you follow Goob? On on Instagram, uh, I know who he is. Okay, so he's been roasting the USPA, roasting the USPA. Uh, for do you know who Goob is? No, I don't. <laughs> so I think he's a bodybuilding coach, um, but his platform has grown because he it seems to do pretty extensive research on controversies. Like yeah. some of them are like creepy sexual assaulty coaches. Some of them are. Bikini girls that Photoshop their stage pics. Uh, some obviously a little bit more innocent, and some are like real fucking creepo shit. Um, which uh, I have mixed feelings on in general. You know, just even creating content like that, right? Like, like who it's made like you? A, it's like slander content, not slander, but it's like a yeah. exposure content. Yeah, and like if if like who made you the judge and the jury kind of thing. You know, like there's there's a I've noticed a uh, in my in my YouTube feed, you know, my personal feed on YouTube is like every time something happens with a famous channel or famous people there's just a flood of exposure videos yeah. or like or uh uh what's the word uh like a theory it's just like every uh, there's a new theory or exposure channel every week yeah and sadly i think because of content explosion over covid obviously youtube and things were a, a big machine but over covid like a brand new generation of tiktok and instagrammers were born mm-hmm. um some of them are so young and just like not everyone's made to have such a large platform Mm because even in the last like two months i've noticed so many controversies going out about behavior and the people that are around them and again i'm not the judge either so i can't say like oh they're guilty Mm -hmm. but at least rumors are starting and rumors not always but probably stem from somewhere right the three of us ain't having sexual assault rumors left and right for a reason um and so, very least, some of these people aren't behaving at their best, whether it's illegal or not, um, which is just a whole weird, feels like a movie, right? Like, all these fake celebrities now are the fake drama, and now it's real drama because they're pieces of shit human. Like, it's just weird. Well, Every- there's, no, there's no filter system for, like, who should have a voice. Right, and, and, they're yeah. not, and they're not, like, smart enough, or maybe not smart enough is the right thing, but they're not, like, resourceful enough to get, like, a PR team right away and, like, mature up right away. Mm-hmm. Um which which seems in professional sports the system has worked right we see a lot less fuck ups from professional athletes and their life's even on a on a tighter microscope you know mm-hmm. so chances are they are cleaning up their act or not wasting all their money or whatever the fuck well because it actually it takes a team to like keep you yeah online and at a marketable level right where 100%. it's like you know to where we're talking millions and millions of dollars yeah but invested into these people like you're gonna have a team to protect that and the brands are gonna have people. To protect that yeah and these content creators have the same kind of cash now but they're just yeah not, but like, they're not but they don't have a team right they're not putting it together continue so goob found something well oh uspa i don't think that any of this stuff is actually new because i think i had heard about most of it before however the one that this was the most disturbing to me uh is is super disturbing period i gotta get his actual it's goob underscore u2 and Big Bono fan. I was gonna say, yeah. She switches up the whole. <laughs> he moves in mysterious ways. Um, it's just gonna be programmed into our iPhones. Yeah, I'm fucking the so podcast. Yeah, probably so. I'm not gonna be able to. F- I'm not obviously it? not gonna be able to find. It. I think it was the the USPA chair and maybe West Virginia. And there's this video of her. She's just like yelling and screaming through somebody's like back door. And she is putting her hand in her pants, rubbing it on her personal parts, and then rubbing those parts on the doorknob and the windows and whatever. She pussy juiced a house? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Who is this person? (laughs) Yes, exactly. 
Exactly. A chairman, I guess, of a powerlifting fit. Oh, got it. Yeah. I mean, there's worse things. A little pussy juice never hurt, right? <laughs> Stephanie Bennett. Uh, sometimes yes, it has. The one, yes. Damn it, Stephanie. Yeah, Vermont. But, pardon me, Vermont. Virginia? Yeah, I, did you say Virginia? No, I, I, I said West Virginia. Yeah, that'd be much more likely, you would think. Yeah. You think Vermont is like some upper class shit and Virginia's just some honky. But apparently not. pussy juice everywhere. Uh, apparently not. Yeah. So this is like, it's just like, I don't know if I can, if, if it's going to Is there any word on why she was, uh, is she upset? No, here, here it or is. Or is she trying to. Now, is this like the someone she knows? Is somebody she's mad at about okay. something? She doesn't look that angry. Maybe it was a cheating boyfriend. I don't what? Think, no, I it's don't another know. woman. I haven't been in a rage in a very long time. I've calmed many of my demons, but I used to get in a lot of rages. But, but did you ever like stick your hand in? Yeah, your I was gonna say like, and then just wipe it on. Yeah, I don't think that was the play. Like if I'm pissed at Dean, I don't think I'm going crotch, you know, on his belongings. I just don't think that's. Uh, that's more like a, a funny one to me. That's like when I'm in a good mood. It's so bizarre. <laughs> it's it is very. It's a very unhinged thing to do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then today there was a post about the USPA in Texas, like the the one of the people involved in in dealing with the money. It has a like 15 page rap sheet of, nice. of financial crimes, and and uh, it all comes. Martha Stewart's running the USPA. It, it pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, she just smoked dope with with Snoop Dogg. That's oh, all she, she wasn't really fraudulent. Did. No, inside she it trading. was it was insider trading. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it was like, yeah, a dude wouldn't have gotten prosecuted for what she got prosecuted. Well, they for. all all those people they're all doing inside trading. Right. That's <laughs> that's just but it's like who do they want to bust today? Yeah. Well, who did not pay off who or who left somebody out of the deal? Okay, let's Yeah, or who rubbed uh, pussy juice on your door and you want to get it. Who didn't? That's wild. That's weird. I almost wish I didn't see that video. It was, was kind of <laughs> going in my head. It was. Uh, it just seems like okay. What, what, what are we? You know, you're being filmed, and you know this is going to go out. Yeah, she she got to be drunk. Going. She got to be drunk, right? Or does she just nuts? Yeah, that's yeah. I'm but, not trying to gaslight anybody, but no, like, no, that's yeah, not yeah. like a normal behavior. Yeah, you would understand like flipping the bird and cursing at them, right? Yeah, like spit she's, on the window. Yeah, or she's something. griming down there. Yeah, she's she was digging deep for yeah. for that. Uh, yeah, I'm just wiping it on his <laughs> poor window. Yeah. That's odd. That's odd human behavior. That's like, <laughs> yeah, it's I don't kind of it's almost kind of territorial. No, I was gonna say it's. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you're allowed to say this. It's kind of like ape behavior, like rubbing my poop on your car. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of animalistic. Mine, you know, it's, mine. It's very primal. It was primal, actually. The the monkeys that throw shit. Actually, it reminds me of uh, um, our boy Will's stories about Guantan- Guantanamo. Mm. And the the prisoners that they called shit casos because they would like shit in their hands and then like draw on the walls with their shit yeah that's some psycho stuff too that's yeah, scary that's what isolation will do to you that's yeah, what this, powerlifting will do to you obviously apparently in, uh, vermont <laughs> <laughs> powerlifting is very isolating sometimes <laughs> <laughs> just drove myself insane so he's he's calling out uh um the leadership of the uspa yeah saying you should be doing something about this and like there are there are there are um memos in there like oh or emails like yeah um oh sorry that that happened thanks for bringing that to our attention and we'll address it and then they don't address it yeah. and finally this video goes up and it's like take this video down it's like fuck you take this video down like oh they're commenting on yeah, the guy's yeah. Post? How, how do you how who are you to tell yeah. somebody else to take a video down because you're not dealing with your your house is not clean okay your house is not clean especially because somebody just wiped her cooch on it but you know maybe it's houses <laughs> In both, yeah, on both sides, of uh, metaphorically and literally. Yeah, the, I don't know. The sport's just like just big enough where you'd expect a PR team to come out and like give some kind of but formal no. Or you just let them go. Well, that's what. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, but very least that, right? Like, yeah, we're looking into this and we're going to fire you. You know, or we're going to look into this behavior and and internally and make the right decision. Like, yeah, you, you, we're not small enough anymore as a sport that you can just pass that by. Right. You got you got to make some kind of comment. Well, there's publicly. just too much money involved. That too, and like loyalties, and like yeah, we're paying you so much money, like all the lifters and all the, you know, mm. it, it, yeah, it becomes uh, not a very good look. And that's any company, you know, something weird happens here. Yeah, I think any publicish company that has any kind of social media should probably police, yeah, up yeah that like handle shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of weird if they're silent on it. I don't know. I haven't looked yeah. into it, but. Um, it's pretty laughable, almost too. It's just such a it's ridiculous so bizarre. response. Yeah. But now, say like replace that with a man rubbing my gooch sweat, rubbing his like, <laughs> rubbing his genitalia on yeah. someone's house no, or it's something. Not good. Like you'd probably have been 
maybe they fired instantly or something. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I maybe don't know. not. I don't know either. I don't know what goes on over there. In Vermont? <laughs> Is that Ben and Jerry? <laughs> I don't think they're involved in this one. But I don't know what else happens that, in Vermont that, besides. That, yeah, that's where they are. But I are Overloaded ice cream. And yeah. Did she just, Pussy she, juice. She just had too much ice cream. Maybe. <laughs> she just Di- had too much ice cream. <laughs> maybe she there's something dairy in her ice cream yeah. that we need to know about. Yeah, it's the uh, it's all the food coloring. Yeah. It's the Red I'm, 40. I don't want to be like the controversy guy on YouTube, but there's so much wild shit happening that I've been doing some react videos. And so, like, I might have to react to that because it's so wild. It's super wild. Uh, I, I, he didn't do a reaction video, but but um, uh, Joe Sullivan, our boy Joe, yeah. has been uh, he's been commenting on these, basically like tagging USPA leadership and saying, "You guys need to clean this up." Yeah, something. Beca- yeah. It, it, the co- the the interaction itself wasn't powerlifting driven. We don't know. Don't know. Like that could be an ex boyfriend. House. I don't. I, Rather than like someone. It probably who, said, and it, I, I'm not going to yeah. pause. It, it, it looks like, if I had to take a wild guess, that that maybe his or her boyfriend was potentially sleeping. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. Some personal with that girl who lives at that house, and this was her way of saying like, it, you know, my sloppy second situation. <laughs> like here, that if, was if a you, sloppy second wanted, gesture. If yeah. you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to have my stuff on me, I'll just do it for you. Yeah, that's what I got out of that. Yeah, that was my breakdown. That was good. I don't disagree. <laughs> that's my analysis of that. Yeah. Then they, I guess they, that's what we're doing. Then they had another circumstance <laughs> where where a woman involved with the USPA was a teacher who was sleeping with a student. So that's a thing. Which is also okay, right? <laughs> I what I heard or I figured out or because I, I, because of, of these controversies that keep popping up with all these creators online, that uh, state to state. Uh, the the consent age is so different. Consent age is different from. And then Canada state, yeah. and Europe, sixteen. Yeah. yeah. Which is like but it's, it's it's definitely uh, weird. I think it's weird. It probably should be changed. It, uh, yeah, I don't know how. We, like I know how I was. Like, me as a person at sixteen years old, I was a dog. Like, you're a little kid. I'm a I'm a pussy wiping house getter. You know, <laughs> I, I'm that chick at sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is when you're 16. You're just like you're just a child. No, yeah. At 18, yeah. you're still a child. For but sure. Like yeah. 16, and like even the gap from 16 to 18 is a big difference. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, I just thought it was so f- weird that there's not like some consensus there. But we like to glorify being 16 and being sexually active in the United States. Yeah, it, we it, have TV shows about it. Yeah, yeah. It's true. And you drive a car. All all of our rules of age are a little. Well, it's like 18 now for to get your license or no. Or am I it? making that up? No, I, I wouldn't mind. I, I don't think, think unrestricted is. license is 18 now. Oh, or really? Something. I know I like tobacco is so. 21 now. Oh, that's great. You I didn't know that. You can't smoke or buy tobacco unless you're 21 now. I didn't know that. That's yeah. genius. Yeah, I think it took that's long a, enough. Yeah, I think that that makes more sense. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, why were they different? Is weed that then? Because, if anything, like, I mean, they're both alcohol, I think, can be more dangerous, but, like, like short term dangerous, right? Yeah. Uh, tobacco has long term dangers. For but, sure. But, um, short term danger definitely more dangerous but i just don't see why those things needed to be different right yeah it was so skewed even the driving thing at 18 kind of makes sense who cares well also the kids nowadays just aren't driving yeah that's for sure yeah the demand is down oh like i, I feel like half of like uh like my wife's uh have some uh cousins that have kids that are like starting to drive now and, and like they're all like they don't care about their license really like, when i was 16 or 15 i couldn't wait to have my license. i got it on my birthday like they're all getting their license at like 20. i get two weeks after my birthday yeah, yeah. I, I purposely i was like dude as soon as i can we yeah. made the appointment i got it on my birthday that's not a thing anymore dude. i the burnt a cd care. off limewire and i just <laughs> fucking hit the road stole my dad's car <laughs> i was a free man dude just limewire just infesting the computer <laughs> oh yeah we know yeah we only had one family computer it was virus stuff but I, yeah. I had that burnt cd and i was driving <laughs> to the sunset. You made yourself a mixtape and I was gone. Took Dude, yourself on the road. I, Fifty Cent in the club was definitely on there. Um, yeah, no, it was that exact was LimeWire. Like that, that, that was LimeWire was popping when that song came out. Yeah, that album probably came out in like '03, and I probably got my license '0405. Yeah, yeah, no, we were slapping that a little Red Man, Method Man, and just yeah, just peeling out in a 1985 Mercedes. Heck yeah, dude, that was fucking rad. <laughs> All right. I think that's all I got for controversy at the moment. Do we need a break? A commercial one? Yeah. Let's take one. Of commercial nature? Yep. And now we're talking tennis. 
Tennis. We're back to tennis. Yeah. With After we three did. non-tennis experts. After we did. We the, know the scoring properly. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh, yeah, I know how it works. I know it's like ping pong, but you're standing on the thing. Yeah. After we did that terrible um, Will Smith movie last year. Oh, Ugh. on tennis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that just was like... A, it's so funny. We called that, though. Like, we knew that that was just going to be, like, a push for an Oscar. Yeah, and then he... <laughs> like, we all knew that, oh, this was movie was made to get him an Oscar. You didn't yeah. know shit, dude. You didn't know the Chris Rock thing. Didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> didn't predict that one, buddy. <laughs> didn't. I think it was I think it was more Jim that said... No, he they, for sure this, knew. They made this movie for the Oscar. No, Jim, yeah. Jim knew. He had foresight. Yeah, you knew it. And what but also was not an Oscar performance by any stretch. No, it wasn't. Apparently, this this new film, the uh, Emancipation that he's in, is is more of an Oscar worthy performance. But like, he's not going to get nominated because because yeah. he can't go. He, like, the, uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's banned. He's banned for ten years. Before yeah, that movie, uh, he is pretty good in it, but it's such a boring movie. Oh, oh really? you already saw yeah. it. Yeah, it's so slow. I didn't even know, I didn't even know it was out yet. Yeah, Did it just a- come out. A- Apple TV or something. Yeah. Oh, it was like straight to. It was like Apple? a yeah. It was like a holiday deal. We watched it on Christmas, and it was just not my cup of tea. And, I, and you know me, I love Will Smith. De- it sounds depressing. It is very depressing, and like um like the art direction and the timely like all that's mm-hmm. really cool. Um, and he's pretty good in it, but mm-hmm. like the actual movie. Mm-hmm. I love Will Smith, man. I wanted to love it. Don't love it. Well, I super didn't love the King Richard thing. It was fucking awful. It did make me like tennis a little bit, and this made me like tennis a lot. We were, we were debating what, what, what movie to do on the podcast here, and this thing just dropped. I still never even seen the Formula One show, but I know so many people speak so highly of yeah, it. Yeah, it kind of they say it like changed the, the popularity of the sport. Yeah, I mean, they brought, they're trying to recreate that with these other yeah. sports that need a little more public boost. Yeah, so this is the same producer, and then there's a golf series with the same company yeah. you know, supporting. This is uh, uh, Breakpoint. Not Point Break, by the way. And if you're into some um, Patrick Swayze, yeah, like what's Break gonna, Point? That's got to be a tennis turn, right? Yeah. Is that Match Point? Uh, I don't know. Break Point. I don't know. It must yeah, be a tennis term. Yeah. And why are we switching all these terms? Why can't we just call it Game Point? Because we call that and everything else. Call that uh, in basketball. That's a really good I think question. it's supposed to be maybe like the breaking point of the sport. Oh, because or this is maybe. Yeah. So I, I cheated and watched three episodes, even though we're only covering the first episode, and they all do uh, have a lot to do with like the athlete's mindset and mental health. So maybe you're right. Maybe it's like the breaking, the point. grind. Yeah. A lot but, of these shows are about the grind, which I do. It, there's something about it because the other show we were talking about doing or documentary is like the FIFA corruption one, and I watched a little bit of it a couple weeks ago, and I watched a little bit more of it yesterday, and just like, yeah, I'm a content creator, but like the skill of telling a story visually and stuff is so unique where like this tennis one just like grabs you and this fifa one i'm like even though the story of the fifa one's crazy it, i just i like, can't watch it <laughs> i was just like eh. yeah this was really well done yeah, i thought it? it was really well done too i only watched the first episode and i watched it this morning but is it because the personality of the of i don't the, think of the, so. Is so grabbing because he's like so the, this i think the first episode is better than two and three um well they I'll, definitely this was definitely the anchor episode yeah yeah, I, yeah. Could, I, I haven't seen the other ones like you have and i can tell they definitely front loaded this series with like the most interesting guy the other ones are cool and they're interesting um but yeah, that's the guy for sure. You, this is a um, uh, the last negative thing I'm gonna say, and because it sounds mean. But why why are tennis players like built kind of weird? They're they are, built kind of weird, right? They're both the 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 doubles guys. They they were yeah uh, yeah lanky yeah, yeah lanky yeah, but long, lanky but like lanky. like no muscle. And then the next episode is about this uh, I believe a Greek girl who's like top ten. And she's very fit and like jacked, but they're all just like kind of built. Oh, her weird. shoulders were stacked. Yeah, no, she's a freak. They show her a montage were of her jacked. working out. She goes crazy. Yeah. And she trains really hard, but they're all just, yeah, because they're lanky in a way, but they're not built like basketball player lanky. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird. I guess I've never thought of what a f- tennis player would be built like. But then some of them are like not super big, like the Federers. Like they look more no. like soccer players. Some are tiny. Some are just like the. The, the guys that like there's like specialists, right? There's like the server guys, like this yeah. first guy. There's like the big, tall, lanky guys are like they're all their like sixty percent of their game is their serve. Yeah, like a baseball pitcher kind of. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's kind of a similar movement. Where yeah, yeah who's a Federer, Nadal, right? Or yeah, Rafael, right? Nadal. Yeah, yeah. He he's built like I don't know, a chess like, pl- he, he built like a chess player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know I don't know what that guy's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh break point is a situation in tennis in which the receiving player can win the game by scoring the next point. Okay. So not the server, but the receiver. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Um, are we the receiver in this uh, 
in its analogy you're of the, the title? You're the catcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're definitely. Uh, I think that uh, I think that probably the title came from the fact that that um, that this is all a crop of up and coming um, tennis stars who are going to replace the current generation that's aging yeah, yeah. out. So they're like a big win or or a like like a grand slam win for any of them. Yeah, means that they're like. You know they're they're in it now. They're top level from mm-hmm. this point forward. Yeah, I thought this guy was interesting too. And again, I'll probably reference the other episodes because I have seen them. Uh, they make it in this episode like this dude is the Dennis Rodman, right? Like he's the, yeah, yeah. But then I'm watching the other ones, and these other people are not painted with that picture, but they're still smashing fucking rackets and stuff. He was like cussing at the line judge. Yeah, but so are these other ones. Yeah, yeah. Like I saw this other girl like <laughs> look in the crowd like curse at her coach and then like she also busted a racket, you know? You know, so- what, I, know what I really thought was interesting is like, man, like this really made this like prestige like classy sport. It's like, oh, it's really not like that at all. Yeah. It's, it's very it's gritty. Just, it's very just like a bunch of just degenerate, obsessive people that have their own personalities yeah. it's like they're just regular people yeah, yeah I, I know it's like sounds cliche or whatever but like no he was like that like the happy gilmore vibe or like the whole thing was the crowd even too i wonder if that was an australia thing no those, those aussie crowds were sick yeah they, they're all in tank tops like sunnies, everybody's just, jacked yeah just slamming beers Fucking the whole the whole crowd is jacked yeah. i do wonder if like wimbledon looks a little different in the crowd i the, yeah they said that they definitely <laughs> the uh the the mood at when wimbledon is definitely different than the australian open but what's cool is that they allow both Right, uh, like, yeah, right, yeah. like the sport in general, the like sport in, uh, overall, like yeah. It, so it changes from country like, to country. Yeah, yeah, it's the same competitors, but you're going to Aussie, and you know it's going to get yeah. a little rowdy. You got, might get a beer thrown at you, and then you know you're going to Wimbledon, and everyone's going to be in ties, and they're only drinking wine. I feel like that kind of makes the sport like golf's like that, right? Like each course has like a feeling well, about yeah, it. Yeah, like the waste management is like the uh, the waste management uh, tournament in golf is like the party tournament. Yeah, where they have like that. Uh, what is it? The seventeenth par three is like the one that has a stadium all around it. Oh, and then yeah. whenever someone gets a whole one, they all throw yeah, their beers. Crazy. On it. Yeah, they all, everyone throws their beer onto the court, and then they got to yeah. fucking take a half hour <laughs> break to clear, clear it all beer. up. Yeah. yeah, I feel yeah. like that's cool because like other sports, baseball, I guess, is a little bit right, just based on like uh, the home run wall being a little different. I guess all the sports I grew up in, powerlifting and, and in basketball, like. Yeah, you'll get a rowdy crowd versus a less knowledgeable crowd or less passionate crowd, but the sport's kind of always the same. Yeah, although here in Sacramento we have the rowdiest crowd. Basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah loudest. For sure. But but like but like again. the the court's still the same. Yeah, you know it's not like everything changes. Where this feels like the actual vibe of this sport is night and day. Wimbledon versus Australia. Yeah, it's yeah. very different. And or I, even like how many uh, I don't even know what to call it games, matches, points, sets, numbers <laughs> they play is different too. Because I think they said in Wimbledon. Both sides play best of three, but in this Aussie one, the men play best of five. Best of five, yeah. Uh, the uh, first episode is called The Maverick or Maverick or Top Gun or something. I'm not sure. Uh, and Goose. It, it, yeah, Goose. And it's uh, uh, centered on Nick Kyrgios, who made his Wimbledon debut at like 19. Yeah, 19, yeah. and he beat, uh, in a match at least, he beat... Uh, who did he beat? Nadal or yeah, Federer? I think Nadal. Nadal. Yeah, he Leo beat him in a previously. match. He didn't win the tournament. But yeah. He beat. He took out like the top. He was like the bottom seed. He took out like the top seed, and it like changed his whole life. Yeah. It seems like uh, tennis is one of those sports where like some teenagers can hang with the pros. So yeah, I guess there's a there's a certain amount of like um, uh, luck maybe, yeah, and there's a know. certain amount of of court awareness that can wax and wane for people. I think you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess the physicality of it is based in like speed rather than like you know like the nfl that ain't happening there's just like a literal maturity you need of body yeah to hang with these fucking grown-ass men yeah it, it, there's just probably a like at that level it's like anybody's game it's kind of like golf in yeah. a similar way golf, like, you know like the top guys are always going to write cream's going to rise to the top but if somebody gets hot yeah. you know they're just feeling it that day you can get in a rhythm or you can just get in a where everything's kind of mechanically working right in your favor and you get a good bounce or you get you know like you said the luck is involved in yeah. both of those um, yeah, you know, your, your ball's just your ball's just spinning good that day. You're getting some good spin or something, and it's kicking out. You know, you know, you're, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think that has something to do with it too. Yeah, the momentum of it all seemed to be such a big part of that episode and following episodes, like talking about the mental momentum, confidence, et cetera, et cetera. I like, et cetera. I, it fucking blew my mind that this dude only plays like ten. So weeks that was a another year? thing I was going to bring up. Yeah. yeah, he only brings like he only plays nine or ten, ten weeks a year. 
in in practices like yeah much less they they kept making that a point too where announcers are like well will he regret it and imagine what if and i feel like even as a coach back in the day i would say like yeah that dude's like not touching his potential but you get like certain personalities that he could potentially be worse if he played more yeah well that's exactly and what he it was. says it obviously himself too or like he played worse being singles that he liked doing the doubles thing with his homie you know, I think it was fun. He didn't have any passion. Yeah. He he was losing the passion of the grind. It's just not who he was. And yeah. they kind of put him against the. Uh, they really made that storyline of him going against like the 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 guy that's doing literally ladder drills in the hallway. Yeah. That's like super robotic and super disciplined, and he beat him. Yeah. Or no, he already lose to him. He lost. He him. lost to him. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, he lost in the second round. You're like right. Twenty twenty two Australian Open that's right. singles, men's singles. He um. Um, you could see there's so, so much frustration that he was experiencing in that match, and it, he was very vocal about it. We we're talking about that before, like breaking rackets and shit like that. Yeah. And and it just seems like he's wired different, and like like McEnroe was wired like that, except that he was crazy disciplined the rest of the time too. This guy is not like he he. He strikes me as someone who's a super gifted athlete mm-hmm. and could probably have competed in different sports. Yeah. Especially at his size. He could have done a yeah. lot of things, yeah, it you, seems like. Yeah, he looked like a baseball player, volleyball or some shit. Yeah, he probably could have been a really good pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. Soccer. Yeah. yeah. What uh they don't show a ton with his coach, do they? They well, he, didn't he have doesn't a coach. have a coach. Yeah, because that's what I was gonna say. He has bring a manager up. but no coach. Because like in that is like childhood buddy. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, no, no. The the um his his friend that is his doubles partner is was his childhood buddy. That's the guy that he met at nine. The other guy, he's they met like I think, um, like early in his tennis career. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Because the other episodes <clears throat> show so much of the bonds uh, between the the athlete and their coach, and it is kind of like our sports, CrossFit, weightlifting, powerlifting, where like your coach is kind of your manager he's kind of the mental yeah. coach the the x's and o's kind of giving you the supplements you know it's kind of all wrapped in one so it seems is your strength and conditioning coach like they're all kind of one piece um in the other episodes they show how important that is to some of these people mm-hmm. and you wonder if this guy got randomly cross paths with the right coach that could like kind of corral his passions yeah would he be it, you know in the conversation of the greatest type situation it feels like he's one of those people that has a lot of trip wires around authority yeah and like someone would have to be able to slip in under that yeah and but like i don't think he's i don't think he's likely to actually reach his potential and continue to be playing in the sport forever unless he finds that person yeah because as, i mean if you're a prodigy as you get older your skills start to, to fall off and you have to be able to start to rely on on technique over um over just pure physical skill. What, wasn't his serve like 226 kilometers an hour? Yeah, what's that? Like a 160 miles per hour? Or something it was some crazy? fucking was nuts like insanity, that. Like, how do you yeah. even re- how do you even get a racket on that? Yeah, there's no way. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I do wonder the coach thing a ton because uh, there's a couple documentaries on Dennis Rodman and I've watched a bunch. Like just like how you want to call it fate or whatever like lines him up with the perfect coach like in phil jackson or even Mm. chuck daly but phil jackson's like such a holistic approach to things and such a human approach Mm. to things yeah he wasn't like a x's and o's guy no like yeah he gives like love for that because he was good at that too but he's such like yeah he's literally burning sage when they're on a losing streak (laughs) through the arena type shit and like maybe that's the type of coach this guy might need where it's like not an authority it's like a a guiding spiritual friend yeah Uh, Yeah. because dennis rodman i I randomly just watched his hall of fame uh speech again you know and he's in tears and he's not always the most eloquent guy because his brain's bouncing everywhere but like it's just so heartfelt how how thankful he is that he found phil jackson and 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 yeah like your career could be made or broken yeah like this kid just probably didn't mature enough because he's kind of been a pro athlete since he was a teenager yeah and never had like early as that early success can can definitely backfire yeah it just sucks and and like i I, because i think like passion like that and again, I don't think he's so unique in like breaking rackets after watching a couple more of these episodes. <laughs> uh, it feels like a lot of these motherfuckers did it. Like some dude looked like he was going psychotic and he's punching his racket in the springy part. So obviously he's not hurting himself that uh-huh. bad, but like he's going crazy. He does it like 20 times. I'm like, dude, these guys are fucking neurotic. So like, but that being said, I think some of that, that character would help the sport grow. You oh, know, yeah, like, yeah. like the Chuck, da- the, uh, uh, 
uh, not Chuck Daly. Now I'm thinking the basketball coach, uh, John Daly. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and like yeah. even like a Happy Gilmore sneaking into the fucking PGA Tour might be okay for the sport here and there. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's kind of it's so funny. Like, the golf thing is still like got a lot long ways to go, but like what we're getting out of this, like I know we're switching to golf in a second, but like the li- the live organization, the Saudi Arabian uh, oh yeah uh, organization that like where half of the top guys went to now, yeah. is like a lot more of a a looser party vibe, and yeah. that's like why their PJ so scared. Yeah, you want to watch like it. you you care now because you see like, that uh, there's Lion- like teams and shit now. You saw that Lionel Messi contract. Oh yeah, four hundred and thirty million one year contract. What? No, no. You're talking about Messi, or you're talking Messi. about Messi? Oh, Messi got that contract. When so did that Ra- happen? So Ronaldo signed, and then the the rival of that team is grabbing Messi, trying to grab him. I don't think he signed it for four hundred and thirty million dollars a Good year, God. and I believe one year. Oh, well, allegedly the uh, the Saudi Arabian league offered Tiger eight hundred million dollars, and he said no. What the fuck kind of money is over there? Dude, money you can't even fathom. I can't fathom. They wanted t- they were trying to get Tiger Woods to go to live for like r- close to a billion dollars for Jeez. just to join the league. That is wild money. Yeah. yeah. I, I I have heard that's like one of the coolest fucking cities over there, you know, you're hanging out in Dubai and shit. Abu Dhabi like, or whatever. Yeah, I've heard like it's so safe. Uh, like uh, I don't think you can drink in public, right? Like I don't yeah. think there's bars. Like I don't know, it kind of sounds like my vibe. It's probably fun. <laughs> Lamborghini in my apartment. <laughs> Literally in the apartment. Yeah, yeah. that's why I heard every apartment comes with. <laughs> it comes with Lamborghini just, yeah, inside. A Bugatti. Those are just cars there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a taxi. Yeah. It's, it's like our Razor scooters here. Yeah. It's just a Lambo. Well, and yeah. they just abandon their cars there too. Like there's supercars yeah, everywhere. I love they just that. like leave them. They just like they're they're leaving the country. They just leave their car. Just like the safe safety nature sounds so cool. I think it is the safe safest city on the in the world. Maybe so. Yeah, like crime wise, violence wise, all that. Interesting. Yeah. You guys sign me for like a dollar. I'll play some golf, <laughs> and that's what it would be. That's worth, a right? fucking deal. They just—it's just, it's just there, there's a <laughs> problem. Sale. There's a problem with like you know the I don't know the what is it the what are the what's the uh, pro golf called or pro excuse me pro tennis called? Oh, uh, like it's like what's yeah, the yeah, abbreviation? Yeah. I don't know, but I don't know which, well, yeah, uh, their PGA name. Yeah, what's the? <laughs> yeah, I don't I know. I, had and, uh, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> what like whoever's in charge of that, like they're just not doing enough. Yeah. You know, same with the PGA. It's not really doing enough. It's all these guys that are all doing their own YouTube stuff now, which yeah. is huge in golf. It's like yep. these guys have their own channels now, and they're doing their own content with these like younger golfers, and then that's all blowing up. Like the whole yeah. golf thing is blowing up big time on YouTube. Uh, not to throw shots, but you could probably make a pretty good correlation there with weightlifting and powerlifting. Mm-hmm. Like, what really pushes those sports? Is it the sport? No. no, it's the creators, it's the lifters, it's social media, where you look at other sports and uh, NBA, NFL, they do a really good job of marketing, right? LeBron versus K. We've talked about this on numerous mm-hmm. occasions. LeBron versus KD and mm-hmm. Kobe versus Shaq. And like they build those marketing things. They're running cool commercials or mm-hmm. throwing out cool tweets. They're hiring like the only people that aren't cringy. Like some people might call Shaq and Berkeley, uh, Barkley cringy, but they're actually like funny. And their personalities, and they're doing their own shit, like, and that's all because of the NBA. That's not social media. Where you look at weightlifting and powerlifting, and CrossFit actually probably maybe does a slightly better job of actually like building celebrities within their own sport in uh, a way. They're, they're struggling on a lot of things right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, they're in some change modes over the last couple. They're years, the whole thing. I just yeah, I I talk about that a lot, but it's just like the CrossFit thing is weird. Yeah, weightlifting. I'm seeing a lot cooler stuff happening. But you know what I mean, though. It's all like athlete driven. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. All, all, I feel like all the most popular and like uh, people that are actually moving the needle in sports like weightlifting are the guys that aren't that good. Yeah. Well, they're the they're ones, ones that are just like decent and have like uh, good information. Yeah. Or and they're, they're doing their own programming and they're selling their own programming to to, to keep doing what they love to do. And yeah. like those are the guys that I'm paying attention to because they're and promoting gr- and the, girls. Yeah. They're promoting the sport. Yeah. They're making it cool. They're making it fun. They're yeah. actually building the culture and community where mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I mean, the USAW and, and other powerlifting feds should take note. And I, I, I'm sure they've talked about it in meetings. Well, but the, 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 f- the USAW Instagram account, you know, which is their biggest social media account there is, it's just been completely just like, uh, it's just the worst ever. Yeah, there's like, there's literally, there's literally no videos of people lifting on it. Yeah. It's just like a bunch of just crap. Right. Where it's you just go like, to, they just uh, have no, they have the wrong people. You go to Hook Grips YouTube. And if, whether you like weightlifting or not, you're like, damn, these videos are pretty dope. The meme account, yeah, you go to the meme accounts, yeah, killing it. You go to the meme accounts for like a, like that or like the USAW like meme, uh, meme accounts, 
and like they'll do like these side by side comparisons of like other countries accounts that have like all these awesome lifting videos yeah. and like highlighting these cool athletes and then they show the USAW one it's just like a bunch of just garbage yeah. text uh, text yeah. and just like it's just, it's just a disaster yeah. and it's like it's hurting the sport it's literally hurting the sport we might even talk about it here but like uh like eight years ago i forgot who it was i don't know if it was wiener schnitzel or fucking some like random ass company like that target i don't even remember like hired like literally a college like meme kid to run their twitter and their twitter just like went crazy it might have been slim jim slim jim yeah slim it might have been jim, slim jim, yeah. slim jim's like, instagram was like viral yeah and, and now a lot of other companies you'll see it too like i'll follow some esports ones and they're like lightly talking shit to other people but in yeah. a funny good way well, like, change, honestly i think the slim that slim jim kind of thing they might have been kind of pioneers on that for but sure. then like also look at like what that's done to like professional sports now like look at the king's instagram yeah, yeah. it's so good it's damn near a meme account now. yeah but it's yeah. so good but it's it's great it's, it's the only well. way to get the youth in it it's the only way to like make con- content that's not just like a box score or like a schedule mm. yeah yeah they're so I don't good need to see another graphic that's a uh uh, of uh, De'Aaron Fox doing a, a layup in a freeze frame with his stats next to it. Yeah. Like, I'm good. Yeah. How, do yeah. They, how does like yeah powerlifting and other people not try to do that? I think Tennis. we need to, we need to use our our Kings connections and find out who is responsible for the light the beam thing because that's to begin with fucking amazing. Oh, I mean, I, I talk about this with my you know with people all the time. It's like whoever thought of the beam yeah, is killing it. Deserves like mi- the, the, the owner needs to give him a million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like it literally changed the city's. Like yeah, it's going crazy. Like even uh, honestly, even if I feel like the Kings obviously they're happen to be, just be absolutely killing it right now, but I think even without that, like what this beam has done alone, for just like getting people like excited yeah. about something here, like yeah. especially yeah. with this team is like. I mean, back in the day we had like fucking genius. We had like the sixth man back in the day. Like obviously we had Bobby Jackson who was like a sixth man of the year, but then they just called the crowd the sixth yeah. man. Like yeah. yeah, any kind of cultural move. Um, the cowbells, yeah, cowbells the cow are bells coming back. Cowbells are so big. Um, but no, this beam, the beam, dude. Yeah, it's just a culture thing. It's a culture and community thing, it's, you know. And, and these other sports just aren't creative enough. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because it can't I, be that hard. They got the money. Yeah, true. <laughs> you know, like, just, just go hire some fucking college kids to scheme up some cool shit. Yeah. Minor league baseball does a lot of that kind of stuff. Some of it's corny, yeah. But you know, but it it tends to work. Yeah, no. When you have people in the stadium, yeah, yeah. To try anything, um, no one gives a shit about minor league baseball. Yeah, until these kids start making TikToks and the companies start doing cool shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. You have to until you go see the bananas, wherever that team is called. Yeah, doing all the dancing, all the weird. One of the Stockton having fun. One of the one of the Central California ones are going crazy too. The nuts or something, I think it's called. I don't know what it is. They're kind of doing the same kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, their TikToks going crazy, and they're just having fun being athletes, you yeah. know, showing, like, behind-the-scenes type shit. They're not yeah. wiping their nuts on anybody's doorknobs or anything just to bring it <laughs> they back They probably to should. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> I almost want to repost it. It also just looked like uh, just somewhere in middle America. <laughs> yeah, it looked like Virginia. I don't blame <laughs> Jim's <laughs> misspeak at all. Yeah, I've never been to Virginia, but that's what I think of Virginia. Yeah, it looked like uh, it. I've been to Virginia. Sorry I think for West all my Virginia, Virginia folks. Right. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I guess Virginia's got like DC. Yeah, so maybe not Virginia, West Virginia though. I do wonder um, if this will help tennis. Uh, even even just how young some of the top like twenty tennis people look. It seemed like the sport's still thriving. Um, it, I know, you know, like it does seem like it. And the um, I think the Australian Open is like like now. Oh really? Oh, is That's it? So it came yeah. out like probably right. When yeah, because uh, makes sense. Yeah, because this guy's out. Um, our our hero of the first episode is out because uh, he's got um, got something like meniscus damage and like a cyst on his knee. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I mean, then your knees have to got to be destroyed from tennis. Yeah. Yeah, all of it. All that quick stop motion like that. Yeah. Worse than football because you're doing it nonstop. Yeah, he's there's no tw- breaks. He's 27 right now. Interesting. Yeah, he's old. So he's getting old. Yeah, he's getting, yeah. He's well, get- I don't know uh, how old is Nadal. That fool looked hell old. Uh, didn't Nadal just? He's probably on so much fucking stem cells and fucking. He all looks that so shit, old dude. when I saw him play. Uh, obviously, just in this documentary, I've never watched him. He's got to be in his like mid to late thirties. Yeah, I almost thought forties. Uh, and I guess it all is, yeah, it comes down to genetics, right? Like LeBron James is arguably having one of his best years statistically, and that fool's thirty eight, thirty nine. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, well, he's also just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nadal's still number two in the world. He was born in 1980, June of 1986, the day before my oh. son. So he's he just he's, did not age well. He dude. Age, he's aging like a grape. He he's is not aging well. Poor guy. He's me and Dean's age. <laughs> is that who I'm thinking of? He's 36. 
Yeah. He's yeah. He's got. He the looks face old, of a right? Forty year old. Yeah. He looks like fucking. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought. Right that's there. That's a good picture. That's yeah. A young, that's a young. But photo. in the video, he was in the movie. He was not he looking was a little good. gnarly. Yeah, he was not looking good. The um. And, uh, well, like, it's a lot of sun, you know. Yeah, it's true. Sun, but like, oh, yeah, but true. like lack, like lack of muscle mass. Like just all of it kind of looked weird. He's the one. No offense, I don't mean to body shame out here, but he just like didn't look good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. I don't know. Look at this picture. Oh no. They all. Some of them have like kind of like a like a. Uh, oh okay. That's really. That's good. young. That's young. That's, that's I remember be. that outfit. That's so maybe that's what it looked ago. like now. It looked like he was that and lost all his muscle. He, so he looks like Ronnie Coleman. He yeah. jacked up right there. He's got some. He's got a big. No, he looks pretty good man. there. But even still, he's got to be what five six, a buck seventy or something. Oh, I don't know. That's right there question. is pretty crazy. That was uh, that's the craziest tennis. I feel like you, I feel like you I have it, to be over six. I think you got to be tall. Tennis. Really? Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's just comparison to the. That guy the was feature. like really tall. How tall was he? Six got, five. Yeah, he looked like he was six 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 seven. Yeah, I don't know. He I'm was going on lankiness. How tall is Rafael Nadal? I expect to see that. Also, the funny thing about too, like this is like a side thing, is like. I was expecting them to say like, "Oh, this is like long-term girlfriend or whatever." She, is she two and a half yeah. months? Two months. I'm she, like, she's oh, you, been so you through don't it even all. know this person. No, she's been through it all, bro. <laughs> she's, she's seen me at my worst, yeah. my best. Yeah, you've been together for two months. Yeah, she's just riding it. The doll is six one. I have food in my Nadal's fridge that's one. older than yeah. That so I bet you that dude's got to be six 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 seven. Yeah, because Nadal looks so tiny in there. Some of the late, yeah, I don't know. It's just an odd sport to me because, like, obviously I know it takes some strength, and then you look at like the Williams sisters, right? And they're built like fucking linebackers. Like the epitome of athlete, but then yeah, you have some of the other people that are built so normal in between. But the amount of conditioning, yeah, the the, the fast twitch just to like cut angles. Yeah, it's the serve. The serve. Yeah, it's like, impressive. It's Kyrgios the, is six four. Really, I don't know why. Just his build. I mean, six four is still obviously very. He was tall. all legs. Yeah, he's yeah. just built. He built like he's a fucking yeah NBA six uh, seven guy. His 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 um doubles partner looked even skinnier than him. He had a really long neck. He had that yeah. Peyton Manning neck. <laughs> Yeah, he had kind of a Peyton Manning my dad face. Used to, my dad used to call Peyton Manning stretch because yeah. of his well, neck. He, Peyton Manning's dad called him long neck. <laughs> really? Yeah. He <laughs> Once you a, notice how long his neck is, you can't unnotice it. Yeah. yeah. That, the, the, his partner kind of looked like a Manning. He did look like he could definitely yeah. be in the Manning family. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they'd be proud to take him. Uh, the, pay, the pay for some of these is crazy, too. Uh, uh, again, I might be... Con- Fusing my episodes, but I think it was the Australian they Open. They barely touched on it. On did they say hundred like numbers per match? Per yeah, per win in the beginning. They didn't. I don't remember that they said a number in the first episode. Then it must have been the second episode. I think in the Australian Open, each win you're like pocketing a hundred k. Yeah, if you're not winning, you don't make any money. They said zero. Yeah, and then obviously yeah, sponsorships and shit, but um, which I, was, I imagine are pretty big. I was gonna probably do like it. golf. Excuse me, I was gonna do it. I forgot was to look up like what's that guy's like like net yeah you know, pro- suggested like net worth like how much is like that guy in tennis make yeah 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 because yeah one of the other episodes because you damn you're talking about quitting right I assume he yeah he probably m- made a mill you know a season you yeah finished you finished in the top ten a couple times and now you're in it kind of like golf really like y- you you place really well on a big golf tournament you're set oh, they said Jim uh, Jim Furyk or something has made like a, a, a Six hundred million dollars on yeah. tour. Yeah. he's like in the mat. He's in the older uh, yeah, yeah. one now. But and that's probably without sponsorships and like appearances. That's probably just like it might have been. It might have been a skewed stat based off of uh, price earnings in twenty twenty three. Like the new the new norm of prices. Sure, that's what he would have made. Yeah, yeah so yeah. far. But so even still, still, but say it's half that. Yeah, he's still making a shit ton. Yeah. So uh, in U S dollars, the twenty twenty three edition of the Australian Open, the total prize money, fifty three million dollars. Yeah. So I bet you, yeah, it's probably six figures That's a per huge win. Pri- pool, prize pool, but there's also, I mean, a hundred and how many was it? One hundred twenty eight. One hundred twenty eight for each, and then there's probably it's chopped four half. times that, right? Because men's, women's, men's doubles, women's doubles. The men's and women's singles champions each are pay, will be paid two point nine five million in Australian, so two million dollars U.S., yeah. which is a drop of thirty seven and a half percent from last year's checks. Oh. Interesting. That's a big drop. Yeah. Yeah, you think? I yeah. wonder why it's hurting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just the world economy maybe at this point. I mean, that's about the you know percentage of inflation, yeah. right? Like yeah, at this yeah. point, you know, it's about. It might just be a general drop. Yeah. Sadly, can't go to sports when we're fucking. Well, it's like shoot. Yeah, yeah I mean, eggs from? cost fucking twelve dollars <laughs> a carton. Yeah. Are you gonna go spend uh, three hundred dollars on a ticket? Makes yeah. you wish you had chickens, doesn't it? 
I don't know. I saw somebody was feeding their chickens like like uh, ground beef. I and saw stuff. that too. Was that on TikTok? That? I think or it was. Yeah, I saw that. And they were like, they say that it makes them produce way more eggs. Yeah, and better eggs. I'm like, dude, you're t- 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 like turning back the clock. We're gonna have some fucking raptors soon. <laughs> you're gonna turn these things. <laughs> Why don't you just eat the meat hey. yourself? Because like, what's the advantage to turning it into eggs? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. Unless there's a fo- force multiplier around beef. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe no, it's I, for the cultivators. No, I think it. I think it talked about them making more eggs that way. <sighs> they produce more volume. Yeah, yeah. Rather than like one egg a week or something, now they're fucking kicking them out. My buddy has a, a chickens and he gets eggs. And pretty cool. The most f- uh, successful player in Australian Open history is Novak Djokovic. Mm-hmm. Won nine times. Who is it? Djokovic that like, wouldn't go in because of the vaccine. Yeah. No, he got to, he got deported or he got yeah. a visa canceled. Yeah, yeah. Because do you guys remember hearing that in the news? Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, I don't. I remember that. Maybe I'm just so under yeah, a rock. Yeah. I was gonna say like, damn, how is that not like the? I most heard it on like the blimp. giant. You think that'd be giant fucking news though at the time? I think it was. It was pretty big. It was pretty big. If I heard big. about it, it yeah, was probably yeah. big because I pay attention to tennis. As yeah, zero. me too. Because like obviously the Aaron Rodgers thing was a huge fucking deal here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And then Federer and all those guys are like Djokovic. Like those guys are like household names. Despite knowing zero about tennis, I know all those names. Yeah. You know, it's crazy that the most successful woman uh, won 11 titles, and neither one of you is going to know who this is. Mm-hmm. Margaret Court. No, no, no clue. She played in the 60s and 70s. That's crazy. Her last her last year at the uh, winning the Australian Open was 73. So that's that's how much she made back then, so what's that even worth now? Yeah, shit ton. Um, seven, uh, below, below that, Serena Williams with seven titles. Is it, the they're probably Open. worth so much money. Oh, they're just they're making all their money on Nike. Yeah, it's going yeah. crazy, I bet. Yeah. And they have like their own line of like pro model stuff. Yeah. Right? Like they have their own like shoe line. Yeah. Like the Serena threes. I do yeah. think it's cool how uh a good Netflix deal can really change a sport. You know, like this Australian Open might go up percentage next year just based on Netflix. Well, if it's right now, right, right now, now yeah. Point, yeah. And it kisses really the whole. It's really about the Grand Slam season, right? Yeah. It's not just about. It's like the majors in golf. Yeah, like, the, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're talking about the Grand Slams, and then I think each episode, yeah, just talks about like a certain personality, which is cool though. And yeah, I'm excited for the golf one to come out. Dude, yeah, that's a uh, golf that's I, this February. Yeah, at least I know a tiny bit about golf. Yeah, you'll know the guys on yeah. it or whatever. Apparently, like when they were making the golf one. Um, that whole live thing went down. So uh, some of these guys that were uh, on, that are on start this to disappear. They went to live like in the middle of filming this. So I think they're going to involve some of that live drama. Yeah. Because there's just like you know there's just divide now yeah. within like you know and now places like the Masters are letting live guys play at the Masters because all these majors are their own entities. They're not owned by right. the PGA, mm. so they can go play if they allow it. They can go play in these like major tournaments that aren't uh, fil- uh, directly. Uh, a product of the PGA. Yeah, so like yeah, they yeah. can't play in the PGA Championship, which is a major. They can't play in that. But they can play in like these like some of the little these ones. random of the major uh ones that aren't like US Open you can't I don't think they can do that. It's funny how like powerlifting, weightlifting stuff try to like funnel into one fed. Like that's powerlifting's like main issue, right? Is we have too many federations and mm-hmm. stuff. But then these big ass sports are actually going the opposite. Like you would think yeah. they're going backwards, but it might help or even the UFC, right? Didn't um Francis and Gano um uh, left the UFC, he's going to go sign a contract somewhere else, you know? And mm-hmm. so people are like, oh, is Bare Knuckle making a route or some of these boxing, boxing's kind of coming back with these, like, YouTubers, like, legitimately boxing, or they talk about Ngano going to go fight Tyson Fury, you know? And so it almost seems like, I don't know. What you got Uriah's league, right, A1? Yeah, yeah. With, but it's I think an that's an up-and-comer league. Yeah, it's, like, affiliated with the UFC kind of, but I, it's not. Yeah, well, it's on, like, the UFC fight yeah. path. So, so semi- they have some kind of. Yeah, but it's just weird to see how. Yeah, like what's the best route? Where obviously NBA and NFL, um, they're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're not, not going to ever be in competition. The XFL is trying to do a thing with the NFL now, so maybe. But even still, it's going to be like a B league. Yeah, it's just I, I just wonder like what is the best route to make the sport the best for viewers, money, and the athletes? You know, is it multiple feds with some options? Is it live and PGA and you're intermixing, mm. or is it a strong core like the NBA? Part of it too, and they don't talk about it ton here is like yeah is there like a player union going on with some of these tennis players right because that's one of the big issues with the ufc getting paid what you're worth i think it's yeah. i think a lot of it has to do with it with like individual sport and team sport yeah like there's just like such a city element involved in like way more that needs to happen for like a team sport to blow up True. where it's like individual sports it's like a lot i feel like it'd be a lot easier to recreate 
yeah. a new league for an individual sport. If you and I had the n- enough money, we could get the best golfers to come play at our tournament here. Exactly. Right? If we say, hey, 100 mil is on the line, yeah. and we just hit up the managers of all the best athletes, we could run it. And that's kind of how powerlifting works, right, with the yeah. Sheffield and stuff. If you have the money in the prize pool, you just send invites to the best, and they're going to show up because they're yeah. hungry for that. Yeah. Where, yeah, we couldn't throw a pickup basketball game for a million dollars right now and get Steph Curry to show up. He just no. wouldn't. No. Um, so you're definitely right in some of that. And some of it's money, some of it's player union, contracty things. But Yeah, yeah the union stuff's big. Yeah, it's just interesting to see how tennis and golf are probably one, two of the better individual sports and how they're organized to actually make money and be sustainable. Mm-hmm. That maybe, yeah, weightlifting and powerlifting could take notes from. Yeah, powerlifting is trying again, I yeah. think, to, you know, like we're in, we've got to meet here the 4th and 5th, which you'll be able to watch on live stream or come in person uh, to watch. And, and maybe uh, we'll invite, uh, uh, what's her name out? Maybe she can rub some stuff on the live feed. <laughs> <laughs> if she would come to a USAPL meet. Have her announce it. <laughs> yeah. I w- I'm not touching that microphone after she's done. If she's a spotter and loader. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Anyway, did homeboy sign the lens on that camera? Yeah, I think it's a or normal it, or thing. Or was it like a glass piece they put on the end of I it? I don't know, but I think that's like a traditional thing. It looked like there was something though, like on the end of it, yeah. like a glass piece on the end of the lens. It's a filter or something, yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, but so I, it's like so it doesn't ruin the you know twenty thousand yeah. dollar lens that's on that camera. Yeah, spoiler alert: they do it in another episode too. So it must be just it like a be tennis a tradition, thing. which yeah. I think is kind of cool. I love the big giant tennis balls. Those they, are cool for, too. For they're walking around with like basketballs, yeah. Yeah, and they like autograph them and shit. Yeah. I think that's cool. It is cool to like see that. how many kids are in the crowd and shit. It's just like a world I never grew up. Well, in. Well, you know what's funny about tennis, man? It's like it's, you know, got this like prestigious, very like uh, uh, upper class vibe. But there's tennis courts everywhere, right? In all different communities. That's like the you would think there'd be just more interest because it's so. All you need is a racket. Right. That's yeah. why basketball is basketball, right? Like, it's an inner city thing because there's courts everywhere. All you need is a ball. You don't even need a homie. And tennis is like that, too. They have all those walls that you just play against to practice. Like, yeah, yeah you think tennis, and again, that Will Smith movie kind of made it like an inner city thing for a sec. But, yeah, you'd think it would just be more popular in a sense because it's free. Golf, yeah. I get it. It's expensive to have rack, uh, mm. clubs. It's expensive to play every day to get good, good. Oh, shit, dude. Like, watching this, I was like, man, like, I would maybe want to maybe see if Brock would be interested in tennis. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, watching something like this, because it's like, you know, I remember when I was in high school, you, like, you see, like, the kids playing tennis, and there's always, like, kind of, like, the stereotypical kid that was playing tennis, but it's like, actually, this is a very athletic sport. No, it's super. Yeah. And it's like, it's it's actually kind of cool. I think, like, I think being good at tennis would be something that, like, I wish I could have maybe done as a in the, in my as a as a kid. Like, yeah. I, I could see myself personally, like the thing, the my athletic you know style and like what I'm into. Like I could in like I lo- would love to if I would have got into that at a younger age. I think uh, like I would have enjoyed it. I think it's an easy sport too for kids because it, it does transfer to other sports, right? It's just change of direction, eye hand coordination, mm-hmm. a little bit of spatial awareness that obviously transfers to every sport possible. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity there for you know just. Uh, like going to school too, like, yeah. you know, getting an education, yeah, through, college through degrees, like probably sport, through like like tennis and stuff. You know, they need you know pretty big teams. I think you know, yeah, that's kind of how it works. But and you can figure out really really early whether or not you can go to your left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> true, true. You're, yeah, you're pretty much a requirement. Um, yeah, I think that that's um, I think that's a pretty good observation. My w- one of my kids played a year or two of tennis and and um and liked it. Um, I think that the bummer was that his doubles partner died after taking mushrooms but that doesn't happen to everyone, so. yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll change your vibe on a sport probably yeah yeah i think it kind of yeah there you put a little bit of a damper on it um so we like to rate these things and we're really only talking about the first episode of i don't even know how many i think it's between somewhere between six and ten i can't figure it out yeah i'm on like two and a half i think can't figure it out from the um Oh, there's a lot of IMDb. them. Like, they weren't long, or they weren't short. No, no, they're kind of like full dogs. This was like a 50 minute. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So uh, we like to have a a custom rating system for each one, and for me, v- very obviously, it's it's broken rackets. It's absolutely broken rackets. I like the collection that the the mom had. Yeah, like he brings them home to <laughs> yeah, her. I love that too. You should make like a chair out of that or some shit. <laughs> Game of Thrones yeah, kind of. Sick. Thro- <laughs> What you got, Dean? Lead the way. Uh, what was the scale again? One to five. Oh, one to five. One to Broken five. rackets. Broken rackets. At least for this one episode, because that's all I've seen. I would give this. Uh, I would give it four rackets. I, I enjoyed it. I, I was intrigued. I, I was. I was locked in. I was like, oh, it's already over. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, this thing's still going. This thing's yeah. dragging. I'm, I was. I was pretty captivated by it. 
I was going to give similar. Yeah, maybe like a 3.8. Th- 3.8 yeah. eight to a 4.2. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It was good. I would suggest watching it, whether you like tennis or not. Like, there's something about how the stories are told, and it must be the producer, I swear, because it, yeah, it is captivating. They're hitting, like, the physical. They're hitting the emotional stuff. They're hitting the family stuff. Mm-hmm. They just kind of wrap it all in pretty good. And plus, it's shot fast enough, I think, to, like, keep almost anyone's attention. It is pretty quick. That's a big thing about, like, docs. Like, documentaries, if you're really storytelling and someone's just sitting down talking for, you know, even, like, two minutes, you're like, fuck, this feels slow. It's not this, like an interview doc. No, it felt really good. They tied in the interviews quick and yeah. well. I don't even remember them. Yeah, there's a you couple, like, I mean? uh, no, you don't. And you don't get to know the, the people they're interviewing a lot, which is good because they're talking about this main guy. Right. But they'll have, like, some analysts uh, that they hit real quick. Yeah, you're right. Now that I think about it, yeah, yeah but it was quick. But it's good because you don't want to know the analyst. You want to know this dude. Yeah, they don't say, like, oh, this is, like, oh, it doesn't have, have their name. And they sit down. They do the whole, like, okay, yeah, yeah here we go. It's yeah, like how long like, have you done this? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I agree. I'm in the same zone, three and a half, four. I think it's um, uh, it's incredibly competent. It's a really, yeah. really competent documentary. However, I will say that a lot of this kind of sport documentary has a sameness to it. They're all For like sure. kind of built on a on a on a on a pattern, on a on a template, you know. They all kind of do the same thing and it really comes down to like whether or not the person that they're talking to is compelling, yeah. what kind of interviews they can get, because they're all edited the same way. For sure. Mm-hmm. No, I, would, I, I guess that's the one thing. Like this guy's character was really interesting, but it's not like he had an insane amount to say. No, and you like don't. He was walk entertaining, a- but not. Yeah, you, you know? don't walk away from it. And sometimes you walk, a, you watch a documentary, documentary with someone, and you think, God, that that's a really fucking cool person. Yeah, I would yeah. hang with that person. Yeah, this guy's fine. You do not think that yeah. necessarily here. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, I didn't become like a fan of him. Right, it does lead you into tennis a little bit. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, there's some good about these. Like I know it sounds like. Uh, corny in a way but it's like you know like they're able to just like be themselves and cuss and it's not like this like polished like espn 30 for 30 kind yeah, of vibe yeah, yeah, right where it's like over polished yeah. over careful it's just like a little un- more you kind of more raw uh, yeah raw yeah. unfiltered kind of like you know like this guy's just just who he is you really kind of get a sense of these people yeah i do think that's one of the benefits of like a netflix thing versus yeah you almost kind of like you almost it almost kind of like uh throws you off guard when they, they dry, drop an f-bomb or something because yeah. you're just like kind of forget that it's like not an espn documentary or right. whatever the no hell. holds barred yeah for sure uh plug away dean we're gonna find you oh uh, you know same old same old caffeine and kilos on uh pretty much everything and you know yeah well ladies and gentlemen brand new episode every single wednesday and friday i'm silent mike join us at 3sb.co um for all your clothing goods and, and needs if you want to head to 50 percent facts.com you can tap into the discord where we're jamming all day long uh, exclusive on clothing uh, like money community and we'll catch you next week i am at the jim mcd on all the social media this show is 50 percent facts where percent is a word and 50 is just numbers 50 percent facts is a speaker prime podcast in association with iHeartMedia on the Obscure Celebrity Network. And like I said, a couple of weeks here, we got to meet here. You can come and see it here. You can watch it on multiple, multiple platforms. We'll be streaming everything for two days. Um, also, we just recently committed to going to the Arnold. So we may see you there. And we're out. We'll see you there. You guys going? <laughs>